morning. Happy Friday. All right, it's Q&A day. It's Q&A Friday as promised. Good morning, just signing up on all platforms here. I'll give you guys a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Good morning, there we go, now we're on all. Good morning, happy Q&A day. It is Friday and I am Dr. Trisha Pingle and I've started this new trend of Fridays doing Q&A, which means you guys get to lead the conversation, um, ask me questions, uh, kind of help me pick topics for today. So uh, at any time you can write a question or comment. Thank you, I have your page is so resourceful. I really appreciate it. For those of you that haven't checked out my blog, it is at drpingle.com, D-R-P-I-N-G-E-L.com. Uh, just posted a uh, roasted golden beet soup on it. Check that out for Thanksgiving. Lots of health articles, um, as well as recipes and beauty recipes and such. So for those of you that haven't checked it out, thank you uh, for heading over there, drpingle.com. I also, while I have you, I also want to mention that my newsletter that you can sign up for at drpingle.com, we have some specials coming up. We have some incentives coming up. So if you have not signed up at drpingle.com for the newsletter, you should, okay? Because we're gonna have some some things coming through in November that might be worth your while. I like to record or reward those that are so um, helpful and supportive. So um, anyway, I have a question over here from Tammy. What's a natural way to help with anxiety? You know, Tammy, I've done quite a few lives on anxiety. I think it's something that um, many of us um, deal with right now in particular. I do have quite a few articles at drpingle.com. I can um, send some of them um, over your way. I think um, it, in a nutshell, one of the most important things is to figure out where the anxiety is coming from. What's triggering it? Where is it coming from? Is it indeed a, a neurotransmitter imbalance? Is it stress related? Is it a trauma? What is it? And I think once you can figure out what it is, that does help with you start to tackle how to get over it. There's a lot of things that happen when you have anxiety, particularly over long periods of time, guys. Uh, low vitamin C, low magnesium, low B vitamins, poor adrenal uh, function. So a lot of the times, if you've had anxiety for a long time, you have to look at using some of those adrenal herbs, um, using nutrient um, supplementation. My um, total stress support, um, which is one of my supplements that I sell, total stress support is for lowering cortisol levels and kind of calming the body down. Um, it's a mix of L-theanine, phosphatidylserine, and a few herbs like bacopa, um, ashwagandha, those types of things. That might be worth checking out, Tammy. Um, I do also have quite a few articles, and like I said, I will see if I can copy and paste these about things you can do mind-body-wise, like reframing the situation, you know, how to look at anxiety. I said something, I think it was Tuesday, um, about, you know, if you look at anxiety more as your body trying to communicate with you that you're under stress as opposed to a condition, but just look at it and say, hey, what, what is my body trying to tell me? What, why, why is this happening? What is it that my body's responding to? I think finding the root cause for that is really, really important. Um, you know what? I'll send a few of these over, um, under your comment, Tammy, but I would go to drpingle.com, type in anxiety in the search bar, and you will probably see um, quite a few different, um, yeah, I just sent you two, but you might see quite a few there. I hope that helps, okay? But definitely finding uh, where it's coming from is the first step, okay? I'm gonna see another one, let's see, then I'll head over to Instagram and look at some of your questions as well. Uh, good morning, I missed your CBD presentation yesterday, can't wait to view it. Yeah, different, right? Different topic for me, something I don't normally talk about, but yeah, and there was quite a few of you. Um, I know a lot of people who uh, do sell CBD. I don't sell it personally, uh, I, but I know a lot of companies that do and good companies, and they were kind enough to, to respond on some of your comments, and I really do appreciate that. Um, so you guys can find well-sourced CBD, but yeah, yeah, take a watch and let me know what you what you think. Um, happy Friday. You're very welcome, Tammy. I really hope that helps. And keep watching. I talk about anxiety a lot, don't I, guys? I talk about it, especially right now. We're all just, right? Um, but look, there's only so much in our control. 
uh, in anything. So you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. My dad uh, always had this saying when I was a kid and I would always ask him for advice. He would always say, you just keep plugging along, mop it. You just keep plugging along. That's what he called me was mop it because I never brushed my hair when I was a kid. It kind of looks like I didn't brush my hair today, but I actually did. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, he just say, you just keep plugging along, mop it. And so I think of that whenever, I miss him so much, uh, but I do think of that whenever we go through times like this or go through anything, really. This year's been just crazy, you know? But what do we do? We just keep plugging along. In fact, 2020 is almost over. Like, we thought it wouldn't ever end, and it's almost over, right? So uh, I saw some questions over here on uh, Instagram. Give me one second. I got to scroll with my little thumb here. Uh, how to detox from environmental toxins. You know, uh, that varies based on the toxin and the severity. If you're just talking about general every day, some of the things that I definitely look to is one, you have to be putting in healthy food. Uh, the more processed food you put in, the more toxins you add. Okay, so you definitely want to make sure that you're not adding to the environmental load with poor food. So I think number one, you absolutely have to watch your diet. I lean more towards fresh organic plants. Um, if you're someone who really must eat meat, make sure it's grass fed, well sourced, localized, and don't go crazy on it. Like don't eat a ton of it. Um, make sure you're exercising. Okay, because exercise helps detoxify. So those are the two lifestyle factors I think most of us know. Now, in addition to that, depending on what the environmental toxin is, um, I do recommend um, just in general taking liver support every day. And now how extensive you take liver support depends really on your individual toxin load. Um, myself, personally, I take a supplement every night that has burdock root, milk thistle, methionine, um, dandelion root, you know, some of these herbs that I've talked about for liver detoxification. Um, I do believe that minerals and um, B vitamins are very important. However, depending on the toxins that you have, sometimes they can bind minerals. That's one of the reasons why um, often it becomes a problem to supplement minerals because it just binds it. You don't get that nutrition. So it really depends on how extensive, extensive it is. Everyday life though, diet, exercise, liver support, vitamin Vitamin C, B vitamins, minerals, um, you know, those would all be important things. Weight loss, because uh, toxins do like to store in the fat cells quite a lot. So those types of things definitely um, can get a good start on it. If you're someone that's had a direct environmental exposure, like you're somebody that, um, you know, maybe has been exposed to some massive chemical or something, definitely seek out a doctor that does that type of treatment, environmental medicine, because what they can do is they can give you certain um, substances that can bind and eliminate that toxin, and then you can replenish with all the minerals and nutrients that you need. Does that help answer your question there? Um, it looks like John, John Edward. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome back, Carrie. Welcome back, Fred. Where have you guys been? Good morning. Nice to see you. It's Q&A day. Throw it at me. I'm going through Instagram at the moment and then I'll head back over to Facebook and see what you got. I have a question here, um, from the detoxologist nurse. What would be your best recommendation for cardiac patients that are on warfarin? Gosh, um, that's a tough one because it interacts with pretty much everything, right? Um, I have a lot of patients um, in that scenario that have moved to different blood thinners like Eliquis because they can still take magnesium and all these other things that supposedly, like curcumin, where with warfarin, you, can't, you can hardly take anything. In fact, I refer out for people on warfarin because um, it, you, you need such a tight regulation on that. So it's hard to make a recommendation. Now, as far as diet, the cleaner the diet, you were asking about protein powder, the cleaner the diet, the better. Okay, and I don't know the whole situation on this patient, um, you know, and that would be a pretty involved answer over, over Instagram, but diet really matters. If you're looking at protein powders, your question here on protein powder, I really pay attention to the source of the protein. I'm not someone, sorry guys, sorry bodybuilders, hang on, close your ears, I'm not a big fan of whey. Okay, I'm just not. I don't think that high doses of dairy products are going to help us. I think um, I lean more towards hemp protein, um, pea proteins, you know, more of a vegan protein. Um, I use a lot of nuts for protein, nut butters, quinoa, a lot of protein in the diet. Uh, we do have protein powders here at the Pingle Home. My kids make smoothies all the time. Um, we use a vegan um, protein powder specifically, um, chocolate, vanilla, whatnot. But that's always helpful, especially if they're losing weight. Uh, bone broth is always a great thing. But yeah, the interactions with warfare, and man, I, it, that's one of the toughest drugs out there. 
Um, so I hope that helps. I know that wasn't overly specific. Um, it's very difficult to give advice specifically to a patient of that nature, but diet does matter, exercise matters, health matters. If you can reduce that cardiovascular risk and that inflammation, there would be less need for the warfarin, right? So Fred saying he takes Eliquis, right? So Eliquis is another blood thinner, but it um, doesn't have those interactions like warfarin does. Okay, so they're using Eliquis a lot more. Okay, um, great questions, guys. Okay, I will come, Juicy, I see your probiotic question. Bear with me. I'm gonna pop over to Instagram, answer your question. I'll be right back, okay? Don't, 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 don't go away. I, I got you. Uh, let's see, uh, Kelly, good morning. I have a question. I found out I have a UTI the doctor called yesterday. Uh, is it important to know what type of bacteria is in the urine? They want to prescribe Bactrim. What do you think about taking corn silk? Okay, so those are a lot of questions, Kelly. So number one, I always think it's helpful to know the bacteria that's taking over because if you're gonna take an antibiotic, for some reason, you better know exactly what you're killing. Bactrim is a bod spectrum. It is a sulfa antibiotic. If you have any uh, reactions to sulfa, please pay attention to that. Um, as far as corn silk, corn silk is great for the urinary tract in general. It's more of an anti-inflammatory. Um, I would use more D-mannose. Um, it's D hyphen mannose for bacterial. Also, um, if it's something that you regularly get, definitely a good probiotic, and this will stem into the probiotic question in a second. A good probiotic absolutely would be necessary on a regular basis. Um, I can't advise you what to do, right? But I will let you know, um, I do have an article on urinary health at drpingle.com, Kelly, actually, which details all these herbs and such. And I did do a live on it as well. Um, let me pull this up. Aha, I got it right here. Five natural UTI remedies, okay? I am sending that over to you right now. I'm trying. <laughs> I hope that helps, all right? But D-mannose would be more equivalent to the, uh, yeah, D-mannose would be more equivalent to the uh, antibiotic than corn silk, although corn silk is amazing, okay? Um, I had a question, bone broth. Yeah, hang tight. Um, probiotics have prebiotic and probiotic. Mine do not, no, and the reason being is that I like to get the prebiotics from food, from actual plant fiber. The problem is if you get someone that has a pretty um, a gut flora that's really off base and you give them prebiotics in a supplement, often what happens is they bloat more. So what I like to do is I like to get the direct good bugs in there, regulate the flora, and then use diet to feed the right bugs. So if you're eating a lot of plant fibers, you're actually feeding your body the prebiotics that it needs. So in my probiotic, it's very different than some on the market. For those of you that don't know, mine has the addition of Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a yeast, but is used in the treatment of C. diff, C. difficile. So it's used for when gut flora has been wiped out and bad bacteria such as C. diff has uh, started to grow. So Saccharomyces boulardii has the benefit of that. It also raises your IgA in your gut. So what does that mean? What does that mean, Dr. Pingle? What is IgA? It means that you are improving uh, basically a leaky gut. So it's helping build the immune system in the gut. So my probiotic is a combination of uh, uh, different strains of lactobacillus, bifido, bifido and um, Saccharomyces boulardii, no prebiotics. Um, but if you're eating plants, you're getting the prebiotics to help uh, grow those correct colonies. Does that help? Okay. Hi, you've talked about D-mannose and wondering what it helps. Is it just for UTI? Primarily, um, it's an extract from cranberry. Um, it's, a, it's a simple sugar that's in many foods, but it's found in cranberries. And what it actually does is when it passes through the urinary tract, it latches onto E. coli, which is usually the most common bacteria. Going back to Kelly, make sure it's E. coli, right? Otherwise, what is D-manos gonna do? It may help, but it won't be as effective, right? So it latches onto E. coli and removes it. Um, from the urinary tract system. That's primarily how I've used it. I haven't really used it outside of the urinary tract. Um, so that's, that's about, have you used it a different way? Is that why you're asking? That's really the only use that I've used it for medically. Okay, 
Hello to all of you. I teach a detox program and getting and I'm getting severe cardiac. Yeah, it's tough, right? It's tough because that's really that warfarin's a really tough one to work around when it comes to detoxification. So, it's a great question. It's a great medical question. It's not one so easily answered quickly, right? Over Instagram. Okay. Um all right. Uh, does cooking kill all bacteria? Lately, Facebook spies has been showing me that broccoli is laden with bacteria. Uh, depends on the source of bacteria. I mean, it depends on the source of broccoli. Are you washing it or is it organic? Um, I wash raw vegetables, but I also tend to roast broccoli. And yes, uh, heat kills bacteria. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think it's just knowing where it came from. Um, you could always do a 50% apple cider vinegar to water solution and soak the broccoli in that for a few minutes and then rinse it. Um, that works pretty well. So don't believe everything you read, Lori. <laughs> uh, William asks about bone broth. Uh, what do you mean about bone broth? Like it's, it's uh, efficacy? Uh, bone broth is um, great for glutamine. It's great for leaky guts. It's great for when you're sick if you need to get a ton of nutrition in but you don't want to eat. So a lot of different digestive disorders. We made bone broth for my mom when she went through chemo because it was really hard to eat. So bone broth can be really helpful in those respects. Um, now, if you're plant-based like me, you can't really do bone broth, but you can make vegetable broths as well, you know, with a ton of nutrients and, um, you know, extract from other types of vegetables and such as well. You know, you can, you can extract from root vegetables. I mean, you can extract from anything and make different type of broth. Um, bean broths, things like that would also be an option. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I make my own protein powder every morning for my oatmeal porridge with ground flax, pumpkin, sunflower, and chia seed. Awesome. I love that. Chia seeds are great. <laughs> if you don't know much about them, look them up. Um, Fred asking about a blood clot hitting lungs and if you have to take Eliquis for the rest of your life. You know, it's hard for me to give that advice over social media. I have some people the answer is yes. I have some people the answer is no. I think it comes down to risk. It comes down to lifestyle. It comes down to inflammatory levels. It comes down to the rhythm of the heart. You know, if you're having a regular AFib, uh, that's a that's a concern. Um, being a naturopathic physician, I always try to look for ways to support the system, even if you have to stay on a medication. So the things that I would look at is what are the long-term effects of being on Eliquis? What type of nutrients should you be supplementing? What type of lifestyle should you be supplementing so that you don't have um, much side effect from it? And then you have to educate yourself on going off of it versus staying on it and make an educated decision on what you want to do. You know, it's hard to answer. Everyone is so individualized. Um, the patients that I have on Eliquis um, usually aren't on it very long, but they're not someone who had a blood clot that hit the lungs, right? Or they are very low risk for future blood clots. So you really have to look at that risk, the benefit risk ratio, Fred. Okay. Um, very, very important. I hope that helps. Uh, Juicy's asking, how do you know if you're taking too many vitamins, supplements, and minerals? I take CMOS, Multimineral by Dr. Bobby, a multivitamin, probiotics, ashwagandha, elderberry, vitamin Ds. Uh, really talking to your doctor. I mean, most of the stuff you're taking are water-soluble, so if you're taking too much, you will eliminate it. Now, granted, you don't want to waste money on a ton of vitamins that you don't need to take. So looking at your individualized health history, seeing what nutrients are likely depleted, maybe doing nutrient testing um, can tell you a little bit more about what you should stay on. If you're someone that lives a very busy lifestyle, you know, um, I always say very important to have all your vitamins and minerals, particularly maybe extra vitamin C, uh, extra zinc and vitamin D, depending on your vitamin D levels, please know your levels before you add vitamin D because that's a fat soluble vitamin. Um, as well as B vitamins, if you're under a lot of stress or if you're a very busy person or a type A personality, you're burning through B vitamins, magnesium, vitamin C, and a lot of your minerals pretty quickly. So do your best to supplement there. Um, the ones that you have to watch for overdose on typically are the fat soluble vitamins. So make sure you talk to your doctor about that. Um, often if you're taking different amino acids, amino acids can push reactions in different directions. So you should pay attention to that. I don't blatantly recommend amino acids to everybody. Um, I think if you're eating a proper diet, you're getting a lot of them. 
So diet is very, very, very important and digestion is very, very, very important. The problem with stress and our stressful lifestyles is we go, 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 and we don't absorb the nutrients like we should. And that's why we're having to supplement more. But then it bears the question of if you're supplementing, are you digesting those? right? So you have to look at the body holistically to make that decision if that helps at all. And that's what I do uh, with my clients as I sit down and I go through, okay, what's your stress response? How's your digestion? Are you going to the bathroom every day? How's your liver function? What do your labs look like? What, you know, what realistically do you need to keep moving forward and what symptoms are you having? And then you make an individualized um, decision on that. Um, does that help? What do I think about red light therapy for gut health? You know, Terrell, um, I know some physicians that do that and they get great results. I haven't played with it a lot. So I'm not gonna give great advice on that because it's not one that I can speak directly to clinically. Um, but I have um, talked to other physicians that use it in detox protoc protocols, infrared saunas. Um, I've talked to practitioners that have used it to help with serotonin levels. So um, I have no doubt that there's a variable, that there's a good efficacy there. Uh, absolutely, and I think it's always worth a shot. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't um, show great benefit. Uh, you know, um, if you can find a practitioner that's well versed in it, knows how to use it, um, I think um, it's definitely um, something to look into. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, good. I got your question. I sometimes I wonder, are you guys ask, and then you get kind of quiet for a moment, you know? <laughs> for those of you that are just joining in, hello, hello. This is Dr. Pingle's Q&A today. So, Throw them out there. I'm bouncing between Instagram and Facebook. All right. Okay. I love veggie broth. Yeah, me too. Uh, what are the benefits of glutamine? Can we take it as a supplement and how long? You absolutely can take it as a supplement. One of the things to know about glutamine is that if you're using it for gut health, you want it in lower dose. If you're using it for muscle building, you would go in higher dose. Now, I don't really recommend taking it in higher dose anyway because I think, um, you know, if you're eating a healthy diet and you're a healthy person, you should be able to build muscle. But when it comes to gut health, glutamine should be taken in lower amounts. Glutamine, so you guys know, is an amino acid and it has the ability to regenerate mucosal tissue. What's a mucosal tissue? It is right here, this pink stuff, right? Inside the mouth, throat, lungs, GI tract, all of that. So when you have a leaky gut or you have poor digestion or you have inflammation in the system, what happens, or allergies even, any type of inflammation in mucosal membranes, um, the cells can get damaged. So glutamine can actually regenerate those cells. So can you take it as a supplement? I'm not speaking directly to you because I don't know your health history, but in general, it is a fairly safe supplement to take. There are contraindications in certain children, certain ages of children. I would not give it to kids without a direct doctor supervision, okay? But as far as adults um, can do great for gut health, um, in con I usually combine it with herbs. I very rarely use it alone. I used to use it alone um, earlier in practice, and I did get good results, but I found better results combining it with slippery elm, marshmallow root, aloe vera, MSM, um, and using that and having someone sip on it all day, uh, like in water, so that it was just a constant source of glutamine. Um, but it's great for gut health. And a uh, bone broth is full of glutamine. That's why it's so great for a leaky gut, okay? So it can help improve the IgA levels in the gut, help repair a leaky gut, and lower inflammation in the gut. So glutamine is great, and I love it. How long do you take it? Depends on how significant your situation is, right? If you're someone with chronic gut issues, you're gonna take it a lot longer than somebody who's not, right? Um, I have patients who have been on it for years. I've been on it for years. I've, I've taken a combination of glutamine, slippery elm, marshmallow root, um, probably for the past seven years, but I don't take it every day anymore. I used to take it every single day, twice a day, then I went down to once a day, then I went down to every other day, and now I do it in rotations. Um, so the use of it does change over time as your gut heals, okay? You guys have a lot today. I like it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. when I get sick to my stomach, if I don't eat, I'm fine. Any suggestions and I go not, when I get sick to my stomach, if I don't eat, I'm fine. Any suggestions, I don't have my gallbladder. If you don't eat, you're fine. So meaning how do you get nutrition in in those instances? Um, bone broth or any type of soup broth 
smoothies, small amounts at a time. Is that what you mean? I might come back to you on that if I get a more clear understanding. Okay. Collagen and kidney stones, can I still take it? Um, gosh, that's a pretty direct question. Uh, I don't, um, that one's a hard for me, hard for me to answer. I can't tell you if you have kidney stones, there are a lot of contraindications with different things, depending on the situation. Um, there's always a chance, um, that meat, uh, certain meat, certain amino acids, certain things such as collagen can increase kidney stone risk, depending on the type of kidney stone, where it's coming from and why. Um, now, do I think collagen will cause a kidney stone if you're not already having kidney stones in normal everyday amounts? Probably not. If you're taking high dose of it and you're prone to kidney stones, I would probably talk to your doctor about that one to get more specifics. Um, make sure you're drinking enough water as well. Um, I know there have been links to um, some of the amino acids with different kidney stone development. I don't know and I don't have in front of me like how prevalent that is or how likely it is, but it's definitely one I would discuss with your doctor and really narrow down whether you need it. Now, as far as collagen, I don't necessarily recommend taking collagen um, as a supplement. If you're eating a good diet, you shouldn't have to. So there's the other side of that too. Um, a proper diet often you don't need that collagen, right? Does that help, Lynn Marie? Let me know if you have further questions on that. You are welcome, Kelly. You are welcome, Fred. Nice to have you back, Fred. Missed ya. Um, Gretchen, any blood tests I can check for cellular damage? You know, Gretchen, I check the high sensitivity CRP, which is an inflammatory marker, um, quite regularly. If inflammation is low, um, I don't worry much more about that. If inflammation is high, um, yeah, you'd probably want to look at some of the specified tests for nutrition, for biochemical breakdown. That would probably require a naturopath. Um, that would be my best guess. <laughs> some of the big, you know, urinary and, um, blood tests for nutrition. I know Genova Diagnostics, Genova Diagnostics does a test, um, Nutra eval. Um, that one might be worth looking into. I have no doubt that there's numerous specialty tests that would check for cellular damage. Um, but I start with inflammation, inflammatory markers through standard blood tests and see how far I have to go with that. I would also recommend if you have cellular damage to look at antioxidants, taking a lot of antioxidants into your diet and into your supplement regimen. Okay, I'm gonna take one more here on um, Facebook before I bounce back over to Instagram here. Uh, diet, water, and digestion is the key. I'm trying to create homeostasis for it. Yeah, diet, water, and digestion. Yep, okay. Coming back to you, I see one for another one from Fred. Hang tight. Uh, let's see. Um, I've noticed that a week prior to my menstrual cycle, I feel icky. Uh, sinus and allergies specifically, but I always feel like I'm getting sick. I read this as normal. Well, I don't really like the word normal. Um, it's, it's explainable. Uh, I don't think every woman has that problem though. So I don't think it's normal. Um, so what happens in that week before your cycle, ladies, is you increase the amount of progesterone that you have, okay? Quite rapidly in many cases. That also does cause some issues to the liver. We're prepping for a potential pregnancy. Depending on your age and how high it goes, that slows your digestion down. Okay, so think about this. If you drop an egg and you impregnate, right, and you're, you're putting progesterone up and trying to hold a fetus, what's gonna happen? You're gonna slow your digestion to get more nutrient absorption to that potential fetus. Now, that doesn't mean that you're pregnant, but what I'm saying is that's why the hormone goes up and when it goes up, it slows digestion during that time. So if you're someone with gut issues in general, flora issues, trouble with digestion, low stomach acid, it's going to compound the week before your period. So usually when I see that happening, I look at two things. And actually, this plays right into Fred's question on Facebook about the liver and digestion. So when that happens, it bogs the liver down, slows the digestion, and typically you'll have more inflammatory response, more mucus development. The liver very much plays a hand in your digestive system. It's actually part of a digestive system. People that separate that are uh, doing you an injustice. If you go to a gastroenterologist, you do talk to them about the liver and you talk to them about the digestion. They are hand in hand. Um, the liver is part of a digestive process along with the gallbladder, the pancreas, our stomach, right? Then we've got all the gut flora 
right? So we're, it's all hand in hand. So what do I do about this situation with the menstrual cycle? What do I do the week before the period? I typically recommend number one, being more conscious about liver support throughout the month anyway. Milk thistle, dandelion, burdock root. Burdock is great. But check with your doctor, of course, okay? Disclaimer, check with your doctor. But anyway, those are some herbs that can help. I also recommend possibly doing more, um, like not a detox diet during that week, but just slow down the types of foods that you eat during that week. Do more fresh juices, drink beet juice, you know, a lot more water. Um, I find a lot of people who have menstrual cycle issues the week before their period are not drinking enough water. They're not getting enough detoxification clearance, okay? Another thing to look at is if you have the MTHFR mutation, uh, that might be slowing liver detoxification. So what happens is you're fine for many, you know, many years and then all of a sudden you start to get menstrual cycle issues. Issues. You start to get signs of liver detoxification or slowing of digestion. That's something to look at as well. Um, so yeah, it is normal considering the biochemistry, but that doesn't mean you can't do anything about it. Definitely lean to your liver, support your liver, apple cider vinegar, good food during that time. It's going to take a couple months to kind of to bring that down. Um, but if you're really staying on top of that, on top of your digestion and your liver support, it should make a difference. Uh, does that help you? Let me know, okay? Um, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Fred, did that answer your question? Liver and digestion are key. They are also highly, highly regulated to the rest of your body. So for those of you, there may be some other questions on this, but liver and digestion play a role in your immune system, your heart, your brain, uh, your mood, uh, muscle aches and pains, inflammatory response. Um, if you're not taking the garbage out every day, your house is gonna start to smell, right? How do we take out the garbage? We do that through the liver and the digestive system. If you don't have a properly functioning liver and digestive system, your house will smell, right? So sometimes we have to bring in some professional cleaners, if that makes sense, okay? Uh, what are your thoughts on coconut oil on a daily basis? I cook with coconut oil every day. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Um, now, if you don't have a gallbladder or you have celiac or you have trouble breaking fats down, you may have to take an enzyme when you use it, but I have no problem with it whatsoever. Can kids take elderberry? Uh, short answer, yes. Always speak to your doctor first, but absolutely, absolutely. Thoughts on apple cider vinegar capsules versus liquids? Um, I prefer the liquid, um, but if you really can't stomach it, you can absolutely use the capsules. Um, I travel, when I travel, I bring capsules, but when I'm at home, I drink it straight. I think it just has better benefit, okay? And you are very welcome, Nurtured Nature. Um, great, okay, I'm gonna pop over to Facebook here too, just scrolling, not able to hear me. Uh, I need to turn your your mic on. Everyone else can hear me, right? Okay. Great. Um, all right. Uh, Debbie's asking, uh, taking L-glutamine, what do you recommend for a safe daily dose? I can't give direct dosing for you specifically, okay? Um, in general, if you're looking at gut health, it's usually somewhere between one to three grams a day versus in the muscle building world, they'll have you up above 20. So if you're trying to go gut health, it's gonna be at the lower end. Speak to your doctor about how much. How much also depends on other factors, but somewhere between one and three grams is the average dose for gut health. Uh, if you have to take antibiotics, what should you eat to help your gut flora? Should I take any specific supplements? That's a great question, Alicia, and I always recommend that if you're taking an antibiotic, you should take a probiotic at a different time of day. So if your antibiotic is, you know, uh, with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, take your probiotic at bedtime, okay? Don't take them at the exact same time because you'll kill it off, okay? Number one. Number two, if you're taking an antibiotic, I recommend easily going above 100 billion organisms per day for two weeks. If you can get 200 billion organisms a day for two weeks post-antibiotic, I would do it. During the antibiotic, I usually just give anywhere between 20 and 50 billion because... During the antibiotic, you really can't, you're kind of just trying to keep things stable. You're trying not to drop it too low to have secondary infections. Once you're off the antibiotic, I usually recommend getting up to 100 or 2 billion per day for two weeks and then go back to your everyday dose. My, um, 
total probiotic at my website is um, the label says 20 billion, but that's what it's at at expiration. So it averages somewhere between 50 and 100 billion per capsule on a daily basis. Um, so I, what I usually recommend is have people take two of those um, following antibiotic use um, for two weeks. Um, as far as foods, um, same thing. Fermented foods are fine if you have good gut flora. Um, definitely get to the bottom of why you need the antibiotic. If it's just occasionally, I get it. But if you're getting it regularly, you might want to talk to your doctor about using oil of oregano or looking at um, other reasons why maybe this infection keeps coming back. Okay? Right. There you go, Gretchen. Yeah, look into that test. Um, oh, as soon as you put something in your stomach, you get nauseated. Um, you know, ginger helps a lot. Um, using um, using ginger with foods is a great way to do that. Fennel, uh, if you have fennel seeds, you can chew on fennel seeds when you get nauseous. That's one of my favorite um, tricks. Gretchen, I see markers are high. Yeah, look into Nutra Eval by Genova. Regarding collagen, there is so much out there about it boosting skin plumping, helping fine lines. Um, I have a vegan brand collagen that I could take daily, but don't because I have concerns it could cause cancer. I'm not sure why you would think it would cause cancer, but I have know plenty of people who do not take collagen and have beautiful skin. I personally don't take collagen. I feel like for my age, my skin's pretty, pretty darn good, you know, and probably way better now than it was 20 years ago. But I also eat a lot of plants. I eat a lot of, um, you know, um, good fats. Um, I take very good care of my liver. I think those things are even so much more important than collagen in general. Um, but you could eat, you could, you know, do bone broth if you want to get a natural source of collagen. Um, if you're into meat, uh, I'm the vegan, vegan side as well. But when you're eating a lot of plants, typically it doesn't become an issue. Um, now, a lot of doctors would argue with me on this, okay, because collagen, you know, is a hot product right now. But in my personal opinion, I mean, I have clients that are you know, um, in their 70s and 80s and they look fantastic and they don't take collagen, but they eat amazingly and they exercise and they drink tons of water. So I think there's a huge benefit in that, okay? Is creatinine safe? That's a very generalized question for a very big topic. Uh, I'm gonna say generally no. In large amounts. Generally, no. Or if it is, it's going to be very hard on the body and you're going to have to make up for that. And I think there's a lot of long-term effects of that that might not be worth its short-term use. Okay. Kelly, I'm going to be ordering some of your vitamins today. All right, great. I am, I am working, by the way, on updating the website to be able to offer more options for you. Um, I'd like to ultimately be able to continue with free shipping on everything. Ultimately, I can't do that all the time now. On the lower end products, I can offer it with larger orders. So if you bulk your order together, you will get free shipping. I'm also working on changing some of the shipping structure to be able to save costs there. And I'm also working on subscribe and save options where you can save 10 to 15% and have it auto shipped each month. This isn't offered on every product yet. Um, I'm working on it. I'm working on a new platform. Just want you guys to know Total Health Apothecary is under constant revision and it's it's something that I'm trying to make beneficial for you guys and me to be able to offer more and more products um, at a reasonable price with as many discounts as I can offer so that it's affordable. So bear with me on that. Right now, um, the B vitamins, um, you know, I do have them combined in a couple bundles, which will save you some money. And um, if you haven't signed up for the email list at drpingle.com, do so because I'm offering a lot of coupons coming through there for different things. And Kelly, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your orders. All of you that have ordered, I really appreciate it. Growing a business can be very uh, stressful at times and it's nice to see people reordering. It's nice to see that you enjoy the products. I do see the orders coming in. I'm not always involved in the direct shipping of them, but I'm absolutely seeing them and I see who's ordering and I really Really, truly, thank you guys. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, help for gallbladder. Um, I think I have a live on that. Um, I generally, um, one quick tip, because I'm running low on time and I want to try to answer everyone's questions. I might have to say slow down on the questions. I've got a list and I've got to catch up to here. But um, apple cider vinegar can help quite a bit. Uh, lemon water can help quite a bit with stimulating gallbladder function. If you don't have a gallbladder or you have a lot of stones, using digestive enzymes when you eat can really make a valuable difference. Okay, um, what do you suggest I give my daughter who doesn't eat enough and is a picky eater? Ah, LaToya, I have an article on that. Did, were you here for the picky eater live? Um, I'll send it to you, okay? 
Welcome back, by the way. I remember you're new, right? Nice to see you again. Do, 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 do. I tend to be fairly good with names, so don't mean to freak you guys out if I'm like, hey, welcome back. <laughs> um, all right, now I gotta scroll back down. I do see so many more questions. I might have to fly through some of these guys. Uh, in general, what are the best supplements for joint pain and muscle aches? I really like uh, curcumin or turmeric. Check out Total Turmeric. Um, let me give you a link to that. Um, can really help. Magnesium, another one, huge. Magnesium can be very, very helpful. Proper forms of magnesium. So check out drpingle.com, Don, uh, for the article on magnesium, okay, so that you can see what forms are beneficial and what aren't. I'm copying total turmeric to you right now, which I get great response um, for joint pain and muscle pain from. Um, and then um, I'll see if I can find that um, uh, magnesium article quickly as well, or I'll come back and, and post it in a second, okay? Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm working on it, Gretchen. It's, it's hard, especially on the lower cost supplements. You know, if a supplement is, you know, $15 and then there's free shipping, um, I, I simply can't afford to keep it in stock. So it becomes a, you know, it's like I'm working on everything I can. The more you guys share, the more you spread the word about the supplements, the more discounts I can offer. You know, it's just, it's a pure volume issue. And I really, 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 really want to keep free shipping for all supplements. Um, but I did it as a trial in October and I, I just can't do it yet. But um, I really, really, really appreciate it. I'm working on it. I promise you. I absolutely promise you. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a process of growth. You know, I just launched my supplement line, if you guys remember, like two months ago. So uh, it's still growing, you know. And although it's had tremendous response and reorders and I'm so grateful, it's still a growing business and one that I have to just kind of keep working with the times and doing my best to accommodate everybody the best that I can. Uh, but I am absolutely working on that. I wish I was as big as Amazon um, to be able to offer some of the discounts that they can offer, you know. So I just ordered more of your vitamins. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you for the review. She's loving the vitamins. They don't make her sick. Thank you. For those of you that are new and don't know I have a vitamin line, by the way, guys, a little insider tip. There's two more coming out this month. I am very close to my vitamin D and my vitamin C. So keep a lookout for those. But um, And I will do more bundles. And if I have more bundles, I can discount bundles. So I will do my best to offer that. But check out. It's TotalHealthApothecary.com. Or you can always just go to DrPingle.com, sign up for the email list, click to the supplement store, the bookstore, all of that. I do also have, for those of you that have been eyeing my online cookbook, um, I have it on sale today for 99 cents. 99 cents today. So go to the supplement store. You will see it. It is right there. It is Dr. Pingle's Healthy Harvest Cookbook. And it's digital. So you can just download it and have it. And it's 99 cents. But only today. So if you're not paying attention, it's going to go back up. Okay? So check it out today. TotalHealthApothecary.com. Or once again, just go to drpingle.com. Click on the links. They're all there, okay? Um, okay, if you guys could hold off on questions, I'm gonna try to answer the ones that have already been asked and then I gotta kinda call it a day, okay? Um, why are they so strict with CBD here in Norway when you can drive down the street in Arizona and buy powerful cannabis? You know, Fred, it's interesting. In Arizona, they, it looks like we did just pass recreational use marijuana. Uh, we had med medical marijuana for a very long time. Um, you had to have a card to get that. So you couldn't just walk in and get powerful stuff in Arizona. Um, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, I definitely agree with it medically. I'm not sure if I agree with it recreationally. We'll see what happens. But um, it is crazy. You can walk into to grocery stores here in Arizona and see CBD products, but that doesn't mean that they're good CBD products. So I think the problem with the CBD market is it needs to be, there needs to be more education on what actually works and what doesn't. Um, and obviously that's going to come down to statewide rules. Um, you know, you go up to Washington, you can buy everything, right? Right off the street. Uh, you know, you go to Alabama, you can't, right? Um, so yeah, it's interesting, the different regulations. Um, I, you know, I think statewide regulation is the way to go on it though. So I guess you'd have to look at why Norway is so against it, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> 
Have you ever considered a percent off if we make our own custom bundles of three? Yes, my site does not allow the customization option right now, which is why I'm looking at different platforms, Debbie. I'm actually looking at different platforms. I'm gonna be rebuilding the site that offers more subscribe and save options where you can add what you want at discount. Um, so you could say, okay, I want an auto ship of zinc. I want an auto ship of B. I want an auto ship of total stress support and they'd all be discounted together. The problem is not all online platforms allow that functionality. So right now I have an online platform that's very limited and doesn't allow me to customize. That is my absolute goal. It is what I'm working on. So please, I know it's annoying right now, but keep buying because the more people buy, the more people share, the more products I sell, the more I can afford to continue to grow the site, get better options, more customized bundles. That is absolutely my goal. Absolutely. You are reading my business plan right from my head, but I have to be able to fund it. So, you know, it's that interim of like, ah, but I promise you, Debbie, hang with me. I'm getting there. I promise. I promise. What do I recommend for an iron deficiency? Uh, besides taking iron, I do use plant-based irons. Typically, definitely need to take vitamin C. Definitely need to look at your stomach acid. Do you have enough stomach acid? You might have to incorporate apple cider vinegar, digestive enzymes, and you should be eating iron-rich foods that are plant-based in origin. Lentils, black state, blackstrap molasses, you know, beans, nuts, seeds, those types of things. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. Loves her B-complex and zinc. Yeah, me too. I take it every day. Okay. Okay. What a deal. <laughs> What's a deal, Carolyn? I guess I missed that one. Um, yeah. So I'm working on it, guys, on the supplement store. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your understanding on this process. I, the store is not going to stay as it is. It's going to change. It's going to continue to change. I just added the cookbooks, the book, my program to the website. I'm offering more and more discounts through email. I'm doing everything I can to try to give you guys the best deal I can all the time within reason. So bear with me. Um, where am I located? I am in Arizona. Um, if you want to see more about my practice, uh, Pingle Progressive Medicine is the name of it. Okay. Oh, the 99 cents. Yeah, it's only today. Okay. What about daily anxiety? Um, hey, you know what, Winosaur? Uh, I will come back to this topic a lot. Check out drpingle.com. Go to the search bar. Type in anxiety. I have so many articles about this, and hopefully they're helpful. And um, I'll do my best. to. I have tons of lives on them, tons of education on them. I talk about it regularly. I know you're here regularly. I see you in my lives a lot. So we'll, I'll continue to bring up anxiety because I do think it's a huge point of contention right now. It's a huge issue that everyone is dealing with, okay? Um, what do I recommend for a height, Why blood cell count? Uh, that's hard to recommend in general. Uh, the question is, why is it high? I find the source. Figure that out, treat that, okay? Doctor also told your audience, ashwagandha? I'll, I'll look at what you're looking at. Oh, it's so my pleasure, thank you guys. Can you take a probiotic every day? Generally, yes, absolutely. If you have a severe gut issue, obviously speak to your doctor first. Is all the health from your gut? A lot of our health is from our gut. I actually uh, had a book in process on that. Uh, it's still here. It just hasn't been published yet. Bear with me. This is all a long process. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here for a while, guys, working towards what I got to do. Get that second book out. Get more supplements out. Get more education out. Get more speaking events. Anything I can do to help you guys, I'm here. But it's a slow, growing process. So I appreciate your patience along the way. One thing at a time, right? Just ordered some things yesterday. Yes, I saw it's been shipped, Terrell. Um, yeah, a lot about anxiety from Winosaur. Check that out. Okay, check out my website. Okay. Okay. Apple cider vinegar feels like I have knives stamming in my stomach when I drink it. You might have too much acid. You might want to look for a hiatal hernia. That's a quick tip. Okay. Okay, guys, I would love to keep talking to you guys, but I've been on for an hour. Uh, Lynn Maria is saying, you can't wait for the cookbook Thanksgiving. I will tell you, this cookbook absolutely has some great recipes for Thanksgiving. It is 99 cents today. It is an electronic download. Don't go to Amazon. You can get it on Amazon, but you're going to pay full price. If you go to my website, if you go to drpingle.com, 
click on Total Health Apothecary at the top or go straight to Total Health Apothecary, look in the shop, you will see it. My Harvest Cookbook is there, my book on how stress impacts the body is there and it is discounted, okay? And the Total Health Turner Program program is also there. And guess what, guys? I have that discounted as well, okay? So I do still have 10% discounts on all of my bundles. I'm working on different shipping options. Bear with me, but the subscribe and save um, will save you 15%. I have that on a couple of the products so far, okay? So check it out. Thank you so much for your support, your comments, your feedback um, on everything. I so appreciate it. This is an ongoing um, platform, an ongoing business, and I can't do it without you guys being here. So thank you. No matter what is happening in our world, let's have a little gratitude. I am so grateful for you guys. So hang in there. Have a great weekend. I can't believe it's the weekend. I'm so excited. And I will see you back on Monday at my usual time. Thanks, guys. Bye.